Hello, this is Alonzo from alonzosblog.com. I was 16 years in Scientology, 15 years in anti-Scientology, and now I've been eight years out of both writing about each. Today, I have an excerpt of a question that was asked to Aaron Smith Levin last night in what appears to be a members only video, but you can see that I, I'm not a member and I have access to this. And so I'm going to be commenting on this thing that Aaron, I guess, was trying to make members only, but it's not. And so me as an outsider, non-member, I'm going to be commenting. Okay. So here we go. Um, what is this? Let me take a peek at it carefully. He's he's reading. Okay, let's see. Bo Beats, question, if you dare. Why won't anyone in the SPTV community talk about or entertain any questions or concerns about Virginia and Mike McClawfrey? Seriously, is this just more gatekeeping? Well, number one, it's pronounced McClawry. And Virginia and Mike McClowry are two very important Scientology whistleblowers who first broke all kinds of stuff in the late 90s. So let's watch Aaron's attitudes and his level of knowledge of his own quote unquote community. If an entire community is not interested in platforming, like an entire community, of people who have already shown you that they do not shy away from going their own path. You know, it's not, it's not like some leader. I know Mike Rinder wants you all to believe that any criticism of Mike Rinder is because I'm like the Pied Piper ringleader of everyone. Okay, gotta, gotta remind everyone about an earlier video I did where I was shocked to see Aaron Smith Levin talk about the greater good that Nora and Serge and everyone else who knew Mike Rinder's history and were chomping at the bit to expose it and that Aaron Smith Levin would tell them. And again, I've got this all on video where he would say, let's, 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 let's just not, let's just not go there. I work with Mike Rinder. He, he's on the aftermath board with me. So let's just, let's take, remember, you remember that? I can, I'll put it in the show notes, but Aaron Smith Levin has already said that these people, this entire community were silent and covering up for Mike Rinder based on his telling them that it was the greater good to not talk about Mike Rinder's history. See, here's the thing, and I'm going to say it again. The purpose of a critic of Scientology is to expose the criminal activity and the moral outrages of Scientology. By covering up for Mike Render, they were covering up for Scientology for years and years and years. And Aaron had them convinced that it was for the greater good. So what Aaron is saying here about the entire community who don't want a platform Virginia and Mike McClary is bullshit. So let's continue. I think everyone's smart enough to understand. Like, I, I would like to ask Mike Render, Mike, what do you think is so special about me that you think of, like, I am controlling all former Scientologists who are critical of you? Like, what do you think gives me that power? I, I don't even get it. So my point is, as I've said, it's not you having the power. It's their cowardice and their hiding within a social network and not having the courage, the social courage to stand out from the peer pressure that they feel and say something about Mike Rinder. Serge was the first one to finally do it, but I'm sure he had talked to, to Aaron first, either to just let him know, look, man, I'm not going to cover up for Mike Rinder anymore. And I don't know what Aaron said back to him, but Serge went forward. So it requires social courage to be an asshole and ask questions that are critical thinking questions of popular people in the quote unquote community. It takes no courage at all to ignore and discredit people who have been made unpopular in the quote unquote community. If people aren't talking about Virginia and Mike McLaughrey, it's not, I don't even know these guys. I don't know anything about them. I, I, I don't know them at all. All I.
Okay, again, gotta gotta jump in here. The reason Aaron doesn't know anything about these legendary old guard critics and how they contributed to exposing Scientology in the late 90s is a testament to Aaron's ignorance. And why is Aaron so ignorant of the history of his own quote unquote community? Because he was Mike Rinder's little mushroom. Mike kept him in the dark and fed him bullshit. And Aaron to this day has not come up out of that. Right here is proof. Mike McClary was a GO operative in the Church of Scientology prior to OSA being formed. He ran fair gain operations on various critics. And he came out and he exposed all of that. He is one of the first, along with Frank Oliver, to have ever exposed all of Mike Rinder's spycraft and technology that he was using against critics. And Aaron doesn't know anything about this. Just observe that. Will you please? All I know is that people who have been shit stirrers in the former Scientology community love to point to Virginia and Mike McLaughrey as a source of shit stirring and Jerry Armstrong. Guys, uh, I, here's my here's my response. Why does anyone need to provide Virginia and Mike a platform if they've got something great to say? Why? All right. So here we have Aaron now associating shit stirrers with Virginia and Mike McClary. And now he's brought in Jerry Armstrong. And I've shown in previous videos, and I'm going to be showing in another video in a couple days, that Jerry Armstrong is critical, pivotal to getting rid of Scientology's tax exempt status. And here you see Aaron talking about shit stirrers. He's positioning them with people who have nothing important to say. And why do we know that? Because the entire community that covered up for Mike Rinder, because Aaron told them it was for the greater good, are not talking about Jerry and Virginia and Mike. And he's making, I'm just going to keep going. Why can't they start their own YouTube channel and say their own shit? They like, have, Aaron. I don't know. Why, like, why? Why, why? And so when we talk about gatekeeping, guys, YouTube is the opposite of gatekeeping. That's why I try to get everyone to start a YouTube channel. Jerry Armstrong and Virginia and Mike McLaughrey do not need anyone's permission to say anything they've ever wanted to say to the... They certainly aren't asking your permission, Aaron, to say what they need to say. You are being asked your opinion about people in your community that you have already said you are completely ignorant of. And with regard to Jerry Armstrong, you've already said that he's crazy. And you either do know or you don't know that Jerry Armstrong is crazy is the actual line that Scientology used to gain tax exemption. And that proving that Jerry Armstrong is not crazy and showing how Mike Rinder, Marty Rathbun, and David Miscavige lied about Jerry Armstrong and others, Mike Flynn and others. They lied about those people in order to get tax exemption is the way to get rid of Scientology's tax exemption. You are either completely ignorant of this, Aaron, or you know all about it from Mike and your job is to continue the line of protecting Scientology's tax exemption. Either way, I don't know which it is, but these are one of two possibilities. Maybe there's a third possibility here. Somebody can let me know what that third possibility might be. But these are two that have likelihoods greater than zero and should be considered. Entire world. Um, there's a reason why people aren't interested in spending a lot of time talking to these guys. And I don't even want to repeat the reasons because then it'll be, it'll be like, oh, I'm running them down. Guys, I, I don't, I, I, I'm guys, like I'm, I'm not talking, you know, I know it's not everyone that's asking this question. And Bobby, I, I don't even mean to give you a hard time. I feel like you're, I feel like you've possibly been led astray by the uh, Alonzos of the world who want you to think that there's some grand conspiracy for why uh, people don't just invite the McLaughrey's and Jerry Armstrong on their channels all the time. Again, another straw man argument from Aaron Smith Levin about the Alonzos of the world. Like, okay, I'm Alonzo. What other Alonzos are there in the world? Are you are you saying like Doug is Doug one of the Alonzos of the world? I mean, I can hear Doug spinning in his grave right now. Okay, that he is being called 
one of the Alonzos of the world. I'll tell you what, that's the last thing that Doug Kramer would want to be called one of the Alonzos of the world. <laughs> so yeah, so Aaron, I've got my own channel, okay? I don't need to be on your channel. I don't need anybody else to be on my channel. I don't need any of this. I'm moving forward with interviewing Jerry Armstrong. I'm moving forward with exposing the lies that were told to the IRS in order to gain tax exemption. And I'm moving forward with how your attitude and your narrative is the church's narrative to protect tax exemption. And you're not going to be able to stop me. You never have been able to. So... <laughs> It's just Doug Kramer is one of the Alonzos of the world. Oh my God. How out of touch with, with your entire community could you possibly be, Aaron? Come up out of the little mushroom bullshit that Mike Rinder fed you, Aaron. Come up, come out into the light, buddy. Do your own, they can do their own channels. <laughs> you guys can determine for yourselves if you believe most of what they have to say. Like if you have to go, what percentage of what they're saying is legit and what percentage of what they're saying is not legit? Um, I, I like to talk to people where like, I don't think anything that they're saying is not legit. <laughs> okay, I think he misspoke there. I think he meant to say, I don't think anything that they're saying is legit, not is not legit. <laughs> so Aaron here is saying, how much of what he's saying is legit? How much of what they are saying is not legit that's called critical thinking and what aaron wants as he just described is someone who doesn't think critically he wants somebody to think in black and white ways like what alonzo says what jerry armstrong says what mike mcclary says what liz gale says what serge says okay okay you should some of those people you should swallow whole and never ask yourself what percentage is legit? What percentage is not legit? Aaron is pushing an anti-critical thinking agenda here, just like Mike Rinder did. <laughs> I mean, you're always going to have something where someone has an opinion and someone can have a differing opinion. But I'm talking about like straight. If I think someone deals at all in outright inaccuracies, uh, I, I don't want anything to do with them. Uh, Barb, you're hitting... Okay, so let's let's talk about outright inaccuracies that Aaron Smith Levin has dealt with in the past. Remember the, the woman that he hooked up with for three days in LA and who ended up with deep gashes in her head after dealing with Aaron Smith Levin? You remember how Aaron, when it was to Aaron's self-interest and to his advantage that he told you she was crazy? Remember that? He told the whole world and his whole platform that this woman was crazy in order to discredit her. Do you get that? I have spoken with this woman. She is not crazy. And if you swallowed this idea from Aaron that this woman is crazy, then you are also not thinking critically. You are not sitting there going, now, to what degree was Aaron telling the truth about the woman he hooked up with when he said she was crazy? If you find yourself doing that, that's good. Aaron doesn't want you to do that, as he says here. But if you find yourself doing that, that's good. Aaron must be scrutinized. And I'll get into why later. Stuff. Bob, you're bringing stuff up. Um, and anyway, I've again, like, I don't have, I don't even have strong opinions about the McLaughrey's. I just go, People like to run around like bashing people over the head with the McLaughrey's. Oh, why, why won't you do something for the McLaughrey's? Why won't you talk about the McLaughrey's? I, I, I don't know. I, I, anyway, I don't know. I, I didn't do a very, very good job answering that question, but that, that's what I've got for now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, no offense, Bob Bates. I'm just, that's just my answer. Okay. So I think he did do a very good job of answering that question. He did, he did show exactly what his attitude is, and it's exactly the same as Mike Rinder's. He, all of Aaron Smith Levin's enemies in the community are Mike Rinder's enemies. Mike McClary exposed everything Mike Rinder was doing as COOSA. He exposed all of the ops that he ran and how they actually work on people. See, that's an enemy to Mike Rinder. 
And he's now also an enemy to Aaron Smith Levin. Or Aaron has taken on Mike's attitude about this legendary old guard critic for whom we would not have so much information if it weren't for him. See? And then Jerry Armstrong. Aaron, I've shown how Aaron has said that Jerry Armstrong's crazy. I've also shown that that particular line, Jerry Armstrong is crazy, is the exact line they used to get over the obstacles to gain tax exemption. And Aaron is still running that line. Why are Aaron's enemies the same as Mike Rinder's? That is a critical thinking question that I hope others take on. And so you can tell me in the comments that this is yet another time when I am bashing Aaron Smith Levin for likes and clicks and traffic and all that. Wrong. The reason Aaron Smith Levin must be scrutinized is because he was Mike Rinder's attack dog for so many years, because he was mentored by Mike Rinder, and also because he is starting up a new foundation and he will be asking you for tons of money. He has used emotional manipulation and outright lying, such as the woman he told you he was crazy, right? Outright lying on people if it serves his own interests. So this is why it is important to scrutinize Aaron Smith Levin, and this is why I'm doing it. Aaron Smith Levin is running church narratives to protect Scientology tax-exempt status. And so I'm going to be have, having Jerry on tomorrow night. We're going to be recording, and then I'll be getting the video up Friday or Saturday of our interview. And I'm sure this is going to be part of it because just like I did with my previous video on Kyle Brennan, it's important for you to know the church's narratives on Kyle Brennan and who's running the church's narratives versus the truth about Kyle Brennan. Same here. It's important for you to know the church's narratives regarding its tax exemption and who's running the church's narratives as opposed to the truth about the church's tax-exempt status. So this is what's going on here on the, the Alonzo's of the World channel, and I'm going to keep going. And, you know, Aaron, Aaron is uh, really hilarious, okay? He's really hilarious here in his ignorance of, of his communities, quote-unquote communities, own history and the people in it. And that's because he was Mike Rinder's little mushroom. And Leo was also Mike Rinder's little mushroom. And it's time to lift the lid on these little mushrooms and let, let the light in. Let the light in and let it air out a little bit. Okay? All right. That's it for now. Over and out.